Hello fellow movie crusaders and welcome to another episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wasserkrug and today we are going to be reviewing the Adam Sandler drama Uncut Gems. Now uh, when I heard about this film um, I was actually kind of excited for it because uh, there was a lot there's a lot of buzz going around with this film uh, about Adam Sandler being uh, potentially up for a Oscar nomination which for most people who watch Adam Sandler movies that's a big shock to most people. Uh, because he's usually just doing goofy comedies and, you know, obnoxious characters and stuff like that. So when we heard that this was a movie that uh, he did so well in that he could potentially get a Best Actor nomination, potentially even a win, I had to go and see this for myself and see what this amazing performance was. Um, that's basically all I really knew about it, outside of, like, what the trailer showed me. Um... And, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what was my general thought process going into the film, so let's go ahead and jump right into the review and see exactly what I thought of Uncut Gems. Now, the general plot of Uncut Gems is that we follow the, the character, uh, Howard, uh, Ratner, played by Adam Sandler, and he's a jewelry salesman, like a high-level jewelry salesman, like the kind that you have to, like, go through multiple security doors in a secluded building to just see his jewelry, um, but he's got a really bad gambling problem. Uh, he likes to make outrageous gambling bets. Uh, he owes money to a ton of people. And when he pays off certain people, he uses that money to then try to, to win more. You know, a normal gambler story, I would say, for uh, most that we've seen in films previously about a gambler who's got way too much debt and is always trying to get that one big score uh, to try and cover everything. Um, whether or not they do it or not is an entirely different situation. Uh, he's, he's obviously trying to juggle his work life, his family life, his mistress's life, as well as gambling. Um, but he, uh, gets this, this rare gem from, uh, Ethiopia. And, uh, he's supposed to put it up in auction. It's supposed to be worth a lot of money. Uh, and, uh, Kevin Garnett, um, this, this takes place in 2012, by the way. Kevin Garnett comes in, he shows the gem to Garnett. Garnett says he feels something special about it, uh, and he wants to borrow it for the night because they're in the playoffs, and he feels that it would be a good luck charm. Um, so that's kind of where the basis of the story starts, and then it's just kind of everything happens from there based off of, you know, Adam Sandler hearing, or Howard hearing this from Garnett. He decides to make outrageous bets uh, towards this game because of what Garnett feels about the, the, uh, the gem, and so on and so forth with the rest of the film. I don't want to go too far into it because at that point I'm going way too deep into the movie for spoiler territory. But that's the general plot to Uncut Gems. Uh, what works with Uncut Gems? Um, I mean, Adam Sandler's performance is, is pretty good. I don't think it's Oscar-level worthy uh, that a lot of people are really pitching this. I think for Adam Sandler, um, it's one of his better performances uh, overall. Um, because he's not trying to be a ridiculous, outlandish kind of character, but Howard is kind of a ridiculous, outlandish kind of character. Just not on the comedic side. He's just that like, he's kind of uh, slimy in a way where he's always working a, a deal. He's always kind of trying to talk his way out of trouble. Um, but how? But Adam Sandler does it very good. Um, Julia Fox, she plays Julia, the his mistress. I thought I haven't really seen her in anything else. But I thought she did a really good job in the film for the most part, so she was a welcome surprise. Uh, Adina Manzel, you know, we all know is Elsa from Frozen. Uh, she plays um, Howard's wife, uh, Adina. Um, I liked what she did in her scenes that she was in the film. She's not in it a whole lot, but when she is in it, I really enjoyed her performance overall as well. And a big shocker is uh, Kevin Garnett. Um, not a bad actor. Uh, he's actually in this movie way more than I expected him to be. And he actually does a real solid job uh, in the role. I mean, he's, he's playing himself, so it's not like it's that hard for him to do it. But, um, but yeah, he, uh, he, has a, he was actually a welcome surprise whenever he was on screen. Um, you also got the Keith Stanfield. He plays uh, um, uh, Damani, uh, who basically is the guy who introduces Kevin Garnett um, and, uh, to, to uh, Howard. Um, and there's a few other characters in the film as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I like those performances. I, I thought that that was good. There wasn't really a whole 
lot much else I personally liked. Uh, so going into the things I did not like, this movie's incredibly loud. Um, it's basically every scene for the most part is either very, very loud music, uh, to the point where it causes you headaches or everyone's just screaming at each other and there's like four or five conversations going on at, at the same time. It's very hectic. It's very chaotic, which I know that is the direction that the, um, the, uh, uh, Safety brothers or the guys who directed it. I know that's kind of their deal. Uh, they did that apparently with Good Time. Uh, I think it was last year or two years ago with uh, uh, Robert Pattinson. Um, you know, that's 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 what they like to do. They like to have it chaotic, right in your face, tight shots, right in the face. Um, just craziness. Just not my kind of filmmaking in my, in my personal opinion. Um, like I said, it's very loud. It's very obnoxious in a sense of just everyone's yelling at each other and there's five people talking at once, and it's kind of hard to hear what everyone's saying. It's just constant chaos and chaoticness. Um, so that, that just doesn't really work for me. Uh, also, 99% of the characters here are very unlikable, so there's no one to really to root for or to really give a shit about. I mean, obviously, you're, the whole film follows Howard uh, and his journey through this film, but... It's 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 a character that you don't like. I mean, there's never a moment where you want to root or like Adam Sandler's character uh, because he's just a he's just a huge asshole. He's a slimy asshole who kind of deserves what he gets in most cases. Um, and then they expect us to feel sorry for him at certain parts of the film. It's just like, nah, you did this. Like, you you made your bed now sleep in it. Um, I mean, Idea Manzel's character's fine, but I mean. She's barely in it enough to really care about her. Julia's fine, uh, for the most part, um, compared to Howard. I mean, everyone looks good compared to Howard, but it's just it's a very unlikable character, which is very hard for her to go into a movie to um, root or like anyone when everyone in this movie is pretty much unlikable, at least with Joker. I mean, even though Arthur Fleck is the Joker and you're not supposed to root for the Joker, you actually sympathized with him at certain points. There's no sympathy here for the Howard character. Um... But yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, I mean, the story's just kind of there. It's just kind of going through like a, I guess it takes about the course of a week or like a, like four to four to six days is about the length of this film. Um, and it's just kind of the life of Howard and what's going on uh, through all this hecticness. And yeah, it's just chaos. It's loud, obnoxious chaos. At one point I checked my watch. I was only an hour in. I was like, I'm getting a headache watching this movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I'm mean, going to overall thoughts. Uh, I mean, if you want to see a, a, a really good Adam Sandler performance, then I would recommend this film. If you're one of those people that want to see the big Oscar movies uh, at the end of every year, um, because I'm sure this will get nominated for at least, maybe for Sandler, maybe for other things, then check this movie out. Now, if you're just an average you know moviegoer that's like, hey, I heard about this movie. Is it good? Is it not good? Should I see it? I wouldn't recommend this film to you. Um, it's not anything that I personally liked. Yes, I can see, kind of like with The Irishman, I can see a good movie there. Um, I can see what they're doing, I can see what they're trying, and it's working what they're doing, but it's not my kind of movie, and I didn't personally enjoy it. That doesn't mean that it's not a great film, it's just not my kind of movie. Uh, so, I mean, if you like chaotic, uh, kind of films, where everything's just kind of boom, 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 and just loud, you're gonna love this movie. Uh, it, it's definitely right up your alley. If you're someone who's not into that kind of a film or not into that kind of chaos or kind of just being almost to the borderline stressed out as you're watching it, not because things are happening, just because there's just so much coming at you at one time, um, then I say stay away from this film. This is not going to be a film from you. You're not going to like it. Um, and just like the character Howard, you're not going to really like anything about the character or the characters in the film overall. So I can't Really recommend it for the average movie go over for the awards people. I mean, definitely go check this out because it's going to be talked about quite a bit. Uh, so, I mean, going into to my uh, review score, like I said, I see what the movie is trying to do. I it, it works in that respect, so I can't knock it for that. It's just not my kind of movie. But going to my review score, I'm going to give it a 7.2 out of 10 uh, because I can see what they're trying to do and it works. It just doesn't work for me. Um, so that's why it gets a 7.2 out of 10. So because of that, it does not crack into my top 10 of 2019. So going to the list, it's going to remain the same with Avengers Endgame at number one, Jojo Rabbit at number two, 4v Ferrari at three, 
Joker at four, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood at number five, Parasite at six, Knives Out at seven, Toy Story 4 at eight, Marriage Story at nine with Rocket Man at number 10 with Dr. Sleep just outside of the top 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And if you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys feel like this review is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest reviews pop up on Sean's Movie Crusades. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Coming up next, one of the biggest films of the year. We've been building up to this for the last month and a half. Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. It's finally here, and you're going to get the, the non-spoiler review from me here. Uh, so be on the lookout for that, because that's going to pop up here very, very shortly. And we'll see what one of the most anticipated films of 2019 finishes out of franchise. So be on the lookout for that. And then, of course, uh, the movie Crusaders ride through the Star Wars galaxy. We still have Last Jedi left to film. So uh, be on the lookout for that. It will be coming up here in the next week or two. Um, and until next time, in case we don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, movie Crusaders.